Coming up, teams continue to manage with COVID-19 spreading across all sports. This is Locked On Now. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. You are listening to Locked On Now NBA, local experts on the biggest stories around the hardwood. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Our Locked On NBA hosts are here to help break down everything from Monday. The Memphis Grizzlies beat the Suns in the final seconds in last night's biggest game. The biggest game. The Memphis Grizzlies just continue to amaze. Sean Coleman here with the Locked On Grizzlies podcast. On the second half of a back-to-back, after getting a needed win against Sacramento with a very good second-half performance, the Memphis Grizzlies go into the Phoenix, go into face the Phoenix Sun, a Phoenix Suns team who came off a disappointing loss against Golden State and who were motivated to get back on track against another top team in the West in the Memphis Grizzlies, a Memphis Grizzlies team that certainly was going to be shorthanded without Dylan Brooks and DeAnthony Melton. And what did the Grizzlies do? They showed up once again against one of the West's best and made the most of their opportunity. Despite having a big lead for much of the game, the Phoenix Suns, just like you expect a good team to do, came right back and made the game close. But in the game, the better backcourt duo stood out and their names were John Morant and Desmond Bade. 65 total points. Only the sixth time in Grizzlies franchise history that a pair of teammates have had 30 points each in a game. And both John Morant and Desmond Bain, each one of their points was needed, including John Morant's last second game winner to beat the Suns 114-113. to On a night where, Dylan, where, where um, Devin Booker was at his best, and obviously Chris Paul was on the floor as well, John Morant not only showed he was back, Desmond Bain not only showed that he was a clear candidate for most improved player, but John Morant made it clear he truly is not only one of the best guards in the West, but truly deserving of an all-star selection in this year's all-star game. Plus, the Grizzlies have now beat Golden State, Phoenix, and Utah, the West's top three seeds on the road this year. Not only does Ja belong in the all-star game, the Grizzlies belong among the best in the West. We'll have this and much more on the post-game edition of the Locked On Grizzlies podcast. Here we go. The Phoenix Suns thought they had a victory within reach after a Devin Booker bucket with just a few seconds left to play, but John Morant had other plans and sent the home fans home unhappy. Locked On Suns tells you how Phoenix let Memphis stay close throughout and then win it in the end. No DeAndre Ayton in the health and safety protocol, and the Suns get burned by it, losing to the Memphis Grizzlies at the buzzer. A John Morant physics-defying finish to close out the Suns. Brendan Clean here from the Footprint Center after this narrow Suns loss. Devin Booker, the hero, it seemed for a moment, making a three right at the top of the wing, uh, the top of the key against Kyle Anderson with five seconds to go in this game. John Morant, too much time. Five seconds is uh, just enough for him to get to the basket, lay it in the way that he did time and again throughout the game, and finish it off. Five, a half a second left for the Suns. They barely get a shot off, and Memphis is victorious. So uh, the first time the Suns have lost back-to-back games all season long since that opening week, and doesn't feel normal. But in the NBA right now, nothing really is. So Aiton's presence inside not being there really hurt the Suns. And we'll see if they can weather the storm a little bit, bounce back on Wednesday night. For more on these Suns, listen to Locked on Suns wherever you get podcasts. Let's go around the league. The Utah Jazz put up 110 points last night on the Spurs in San Antonio. But Locked on Jazz says it wasn't the scoring that won the Utah game. Without Donovan Mitchell in the lineup, the defense came up big to secure the win. The Utah Jazz continue their brilliant road basketball play with a 110-104 
easy win against the San Antonio Spurs. David Locke with Locked on Jazz in a game in which the Spurs didn't have DeJounte Murray and the Jazz did not have Donovan Mitchell. It was the Jazz defense that really got the job done tonight, holding the Spurs below a point of possession. The Jazz defense is beginning to show signs, again, of being that number one defensive team that they were a year ago. The Jazz are a much better offensive team with Donovan Mitchell, but statistically this year they've been a better defensive team when he was off the floor, and the defense carried them to the win tonight. Then offensively they got great balance, led by San Antonio native Jordan Clarkson, who led the Jazz with 21 points on the night as the Jazz had six different players pick up the scoring and score in double figures to lead the way for yet another win. The Utah Jazz have won 13 of their last 15. For more on this, go to Locked On Jazz on the Locked On Podcast Network. While the Jazz called a good defense, Greg Popovich and Locked On Spurs put the blame for San Antonio's loss more on poor shooting from the Spurs. The Spurs simply could not keep their three-game winning streak going. This is Jeff Garcia with Locked On Spurs. Give you a quick recap of the Spurs' loss to the Jazz out in San Antonio. Spurs lose to Utah 110-104 in a game that featured uh, both teams not having their primary weapons. Utah was without Donovan Mitchell. The Spurs were out with DeJounte Murray uh, in COVID protocols. Needless to say, it was still enough for the uh, Jazz to give the Spurs uh, their 19th loss on the season. So we came down to early three-point shooting for San Antonio and poor shooting overall. Popovich highlighted it after the game, saying that they just uh, shot the ball terribly. Although the uh, Spurs still connected on one more three-point shot, 10 for 30, uh, they simply could not match uh, Utah's uh, shooting early in the first half. Uh, Utah outscored San Antonio 34 to 27 in the uh, first half period. Spurs gave it a go in that final frame, uh, outscoring Utah 34-28. to It just was not enough. Derek White led the way with 21 points, 8 for 16 shooting. And uh, overall, you look at the Spurs and it, it was a, uh, a learning game uh, for the Spurs as Popovich highlighted after the game. They did well. You know, they shot the ball 45%. Uh, they hit more threes, as I mentioned earlier, than Utah. They just were doing the little things, you know, where we're not, uh, not making timely shots. Uh, Derek White saw two potential game-changing three-point shooters just go in and out. But like Devin Vassell picking up, uh, you know, silly fouls at the end. The lead, nevertheless, uh, yeah, I mean, even out, outscored the Jazz 68-54 uh, to 54 in the paint. And... Yeah, still was not enough. Spurs will next face the Miami Heat in their home game uh, coming up on December 29th. Jeff Garcia here, Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. The Minnesota Timberwolves had new faces take over the scoring range last night as the Wolves beat the Celtics in Minnesota on Monday. Locked On Wolves calls out the new scoring stars in a Minnesota win. Ben Beacon with Locked On Wolves here. The Minnesota Timberwolves beat the Boston Celtics tonight by five. Greg Monroe had a double, a near double-double and really almost a triple-double in his Timberwolves debut. Jalen Noel had 29 points off the bench and 20 from Jaden McDaniels, who's a member of the starting lineup for the shorthanded Wolves against the shorthanded Celtics on Monday night from Target Center. This was an exciting game. The Wolves were down by 11 at halftime, had a big third quarter, got within five, and then down the stretch, it was all Jalen Noel, all Greg Monroe, and the Timberwolves were able to hold on for the victory late in this one. We're going to talk all about it on the postgame podcast tonight. We'll talk what Greg Monroe brought in terms of his off, his rebound, really on both ends of the floor, as well as his passing out of the post, his overall toughness, and Jalen Noel really taking advantage of extended minutes. It's all coming up on the postgame pod here tonight on Locked On Wolves. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Wolves for all things Timberwolves. The Boston Celtics had already been hit hard by COVID before losing Jason Tatum for Monday's Game 2, and Boston just couldn't overcome all of those missing pieces. Locked On Celtics details everything Boston needed to do better to get the win. Hey there, John Corrales here from the Locked On Celtics podcast after a 108-103 Lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves, another fourth quarter collapse. This one was probably uh, the worst of them all because the Minnesota Timberwolves didn't have any of their good players. Yet somehow, Greg Monroe was one of the guys that helped kill the Celtics in the fourth quarter. Celtics were outscored 34-24, and it wasn't even really that close. The Celtics were 3 of 14 from 3 in the fourth quarter. They gave up 50 points in the paint in the game. They could not defend, especially in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they didn't have Jason Tatum. And they did have 
a bunch of guys in COVID protocols as well. But they got Al Horford back. They got Grant Williams back. They definitely had more talent on the floor, but they just couldn't get it going in the fourth quarter. And once again, they let that just devolve into bad fourth quarter defense. Something, something has to change here. Attitudes, something has to change because the Celtics just can't go out there against a team like Minnesota with all of their COVID protocol guys out. No Carl Anthony Towns, no D'Angelo Russell, no Anthony Edwards, no excuse to lose to this team. You still had Jayla Brown, Al Horford, Grant Williams. Uh, Peyton Pritchard was hitting shots early, but just another rough one for the Celtics. I'll talk about it on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Make sure you're subscribed. Get the show on YouTube. That's a wrap for us. Thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. For more on the association and your favorite team, make your second listen Locked On NBA and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kim Becker. This has been Locked On Now. Locked On your team every day.